Hi guys, um, I'm Lindsay from Britain Co. And we're here today uh, to show you how to do a safe stick and poke tattoo with our friends from the Stick and Poke Tattoo Kit. Uh, we have Nicole here. Hi. And our harm reduction specialist. Hi, I'm Hannah. And today uh, we're going to go through this box to look at all the necessary steps and precautions to take when doing a stick and poke tattoo at home and hear from our safety specialist as well as put a new fresh tattoo in my arm. <laughs> so, yay! yay. <laughs> uh, and so um, <clears throat> Nicole's going to walk us through the kit that she put together and if uh, you can tell us a little bit about the background. Of okay. Well, Hannah actually um, did my first stick and poke tattoo using a, a sewing needle, which is a common way to do it with thread and India ink. And it's right here, the circle. <laughs> if you want to zoom in, it's, it's pretty nice. It's beautiful, actually. I really still like it. Um, We've gotten some, some practice since then and improved yeah. upon our Hannah. techniques. Yes. And um, I learned a lot through this process. And I, at the time, was a biology teacher and know a little bit about bloodborne pathogens and infections and so I decided to create a product that's a harm reduction product for people who stick and poke at home. And so it's been in development over many years. Um, started about three years ago and so I'm just trying to make it better all the time. So I think we're gonna open oh, it up. Let's see what's in there. Okay, so we've got this booklet, always mm -hmm. updated. It's got uh, instructions, warnings, what's in the kit, what's in the ink, um, what to look out for, um, bloodborne pathogens specifically um, being the most important thing when you're, when you're breaching your skin. Um, tips for the design, contents, like I said, and then instructions. So we're going to kind of follow these instructions as we go so we can... Take out the materials, you get gloves, glass jar, you get black ink standard, it's vegan, you get three needles, different sizes, stencil stuff, um, you get a stencil, cool. paper, hustle butter for aftercare, alcohol pads for before and after, band-aid, witch hazel, and a medical uh, covering for your space that you're gonna be poking. And then this sponge to wipe up some stuff as you tattoo. So that's right. what's in there. And I think that we are also gonna use some different colors. We're gonna mix those. So today, um, I'm going to be tattooing a female symbol on my arm and I kind of like to mix between the two colors. And Nicole said that um, these, uh, inks are also um, capable of being mixed together to create a custom color, which is really cool. Yeah. So the first thing you do is you lay out, well first we washed our hands with soap and water and yep. washed the area. So we're all clean and then we lay out the bib and you actually can open those packages cool. and she's going to do it to herself, which is totally legal <laughs> to tattoo yourself. It is illegal to tattoo someone else unless you are a tattoo artist that has taken the test on bloodborne pathogens. It also has your space um, checked out by the California board or something or another. Great. So, and in some states it might actually be legal to tattoo some other people, but in California you can only do it yourself. So, so what, do I do? what should I do first? So you can start with putting the ink in the jar. Okay. So you just put the ratio that you want with the color that you like. So the ink is vegan. What makes it vegan? It, um, the glycerin is not oh, okay. is, is plant based, okay. so not animal based. Um, it's also a professional grade, technically bloodline ink, which is one of the top ink companies, and it's mm -hmm. in California. And people love our inks because it's that high quality. So and local. And, and local. local. I try to make everything local and mm -hmm. I use the wax paper and the cardboard and try to just keep plastic out of the equation. Mm -hmm. but it's good that they're, they're sealed and you know Sterile. that um, 
when you're when you're tattooing you don't want to um, as much as you don't want to be sharing needles and equipment with other people you also don't want to be sharing ink uh, so knowing that it's it's your own ink and that it's sealed and hasn't been contaminated by any kind of bacteria or um, anything else that could get into it uh, people you know often will when they don't have access to stuff of like this will use you know pen ink or india ink mm -hmm. or you know anything that has pigment and you never know where it's been you know or um and you could be introducing all kinds of things into your body which we want to avoid cool cool and then what's next so then you're going to use the stencil okay. to draw your design or you could trace over a current design if you have it already okay. drawn i think you, yours is simple enough you're just gonna just go for it. it so you take out the brown paper and yeah. then this side yep okay let me start over And so the stencil is kind of a new thing. This is a professional uh, supply as well. So this is a popular brand that awesome. professionals use. Okay. And it is also Perfect. for, and then so you can cut that out or we can just, Let's just tear, tear it. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? It's small enough. And then, okay. uh, you put a little stencil stuff on your arm where you want it to go. And this is important to not put too much. Put a little bead onto your arm. Yeah. You don't want it to be shiny. If it's shiny, it might bleed a little. Okay. So you kind of like put it on. Yeah, there you go. It's like, like a little glisten. A little, gl little glisten, but no puddles. Okay. And put it where you want it. We can help you with this if you want. See, how are you doing? Okay. A big group effort. Where was it? So in that region like this? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so you put it pen up and stencil down. And you can always do this over and over. You can wipe it off if it doesn't stay. Cute. No, it's great. You can Perfect. just have that for a while if you want to test, <laughs> test it, out. it out. See if you like it. The stencil stuff. around town for a little while, see how it yep. feels. Exactly. Stencil stuff. This keeps, this makes it so it stays for, through the wiping. So that's why you use stencil stuff. Cool. What's next? Next, we're gonna prep the area. Okay. So you put on your gloves. And just to note that gloves, people are thinking, okay, gloves are sterile. They're actually not sterile. They're sanitary. And we keep them sanitary and repackage them for you. But um, there's no need to use sterile gloves. Mm -hmm. And no tattoo artists use sterile gloves. They come in a big box. Got it. Cool. So. They're also um, non-latex gloves, yeah. which is a small detail but important because some people are allergic to latex, yeah. and so you just want to be, you know, across the board, making sure that you're not putting anybody in a situation where they could have a reaction to okay. to latex. So it's great. All right. So then we're gonna take one of the alcohol pads. Okay. Open it up. Yeah. And wipe over the stencil. Now actually, you do want to let the stencil sit for a little while. So okay. let's, let's see if it's dry. It looks pretty dry. And it's pretty easy design, so I don't think I get too lost. Cool. So mm -hmm. we'll just go ahead. <laughs> but it'll, the more of it will stay the longer you leave it. So we just sterilize. And you actually want to like... The whole area? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Just around it. Yeah. It's good when you're using the alcohol to, rather than going in like a circular mm -hmm. motion, you want to go in one direction. Good to Otherwise, know. you're just mm. kind of rubbing the bacteria around okay. a little bit. Ah. So yeah, exactly like that. So That's, glad. Um, yeah, just an added little little Perfect. thing. It's not so much about the like vigorously covering okay. it as much as like you're pushing. Think of it as moving the bacteria exactly. out of the way. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And then we can um, prep the area by um, unpackaging the things that you might use. Cool. So that'll be that. And the witch hazel wipes too. Because you'll get ink on your gloves and it just gets everywhere. Okay. Otherwise. So you kind of lay stuff out. And then you got to decide which needle you want to use. So Can you tell us about the needles? Yeah, we have three sizes in the single kit. That's always changing. I think I might add some more soon. So the standard kit will get um, different kinds of needles. So cool. look out for that. 
But there's three, five, and seven. Do you want to explain what that is? The, the different needles? Yeah. Um, if they're different, so the tattoo needles have um, basically just covered different amount of surface area. Mm -hmm. So depending on how fine of a line you want to do, if you're um, just wanting to do a very simple outline, um, you might want to use a needle that has a, a smaller, smaller gauge. So, um, or I guess it's a bigger gauge smaller gauge so yeah, yeah the, bigger, the bigger the number the smaller the gauge which is kind of confusing but well, um, this, these are the number of needles but there is something with taper and diameter and so yeah so there but, so within the the needles that are on there there's more or less needles yeah. the needles themselves have a particular gauge yeah if you want a thicker line you want to use a needle that has more needles yeah on it so cool. she's kind of speaking from a, a syringe perspective also she's yeah like, she works for a harm reduction which is um it's similar harmful. principles you know when you're using when you're using needles and you're uh, there's any risk of um you know blood burden pathogens mm -hmm. or potential for people to be sharing equipment and um in fluid exchange in any kind of way you know the a lot of the same rules apply and as far as harm reduction goes you're engaging in something that's inherently has risk involved and so we want to minimize the risks that are involved in that so that's kind of kind of universal whether you're injecting drugs or giving yourself a tattoo right. or driving in your car or <laughs> just walking down the street yeah. all right so, so you chose in what I, i'm gonna go with a five okay five so there's five needles five little needles and mm -hmm. it's a round liner so it's it's a round shaped so you can each dot is round and it's a liner so it's meant for lines mm -hmm. and so yeah so you just open that up and one thing you can do is check with if you have a magnifying glass or if you just want to look really closely at the tip to make sure that the needles look good um, and what are you looking out for when you're looking at the needles? You're just looking for a good solder on there because they are soldered together and that they're oh, all cool. kind of pointing in a round configuration if it's a round liner and um, that looks good to me. Cool. <laughs> and, and that they're not, if any of those are loose, that'd be bad, right? You don't want to lose right. them in your skin. I mean, it's rare, but it's just good to look. And then, yeah, you can... Uh, mix up the, mix yeah, up the ink mix that we've made. Mm -hmm. Another small little oh, tip when yeah. you're yeah, mixing yeah. the ink, uh -huh. it's, it's okay, you didn't do anything wrong, but um, just as, as, you're, as you're mixing it and then continuing with the tattoo, so the, the point of the needle is, is just incredibly fine and sharp, okay. you know, and you want to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. So and anytime that the point touches anything, it's losing some of its dullness. Like a knife. Sharp you exactly. Be able to exactly. take care of your knife. So, yeah, okay. so when you're dipping into your little vial or mixing it, as much as you can avoid um, hitting the, the edge of, of the vial itself, that's cool. just going um, you know, to keep it sharper, give you better lines, yeah. be less painful, nice. you know, yeah. all of those all good things. things. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And then there's another pro tip here, okay. which is to open the hustle butter Great. and put a little bit... Okay. Just opening it. Okay. Well, I'll let her grab it out yeah. of there. So, put a little bit on there, and this will prevent the ink from spreading all over the place while you tattoo. And it also just so take that, a little here and mm -hmm. put that there. So exactly. Yeah, there's helps, that little helps trick. Helps the little. Keeps it in place. Yeah. Keeps it in place. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and mm -hmm. now Hannah has more experience with yeah. tattooing, so I'll just let her guide you through. Great. Um, yeah. And, so. And you've done one before. So. Yeah. It's not my first word yet. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> it's, it's a bit of a, um, you know, kind of have to just do it, feel sure. how, how feel it goes. It. And, mm -hmm. you know, always want to err on the side of um, less is more, you know, start out really light. And then um, if you feel like it's, you know, not puncturing the skin or that you're not, um, you can see if it, the ink is, is actually sitting, then you want to go a little bit further, okay. but you're not actually going under the skin, you know, you're staying within the epidermal layer. Um, so as far as like technique of where you want to start, that's mm -hmm. kind of up to you. Okay. If it was for me, I would, I would want to do the circle first. Um, just because that's the area that, um, you know, keeping the, the circle round is maybe going to be a bit more, more challenging. So, um, yeah, you can do that. And then if you need to redraw on the, the bottom line, you can go back and do that later. You can do multiple pokes while, you know, okay, before dipping again. 
right? You right, can, yeah. So, and you can get kind of the outline and then fill it in later is one technique. Yeah, everybody's do do? skin is a little bit different. Um, some people have skin that's just a lot more like kind of absorbent by nature and some people have like my skin is pretty coarse and like I kind of have to um, um, you know just takes a little bit more muscle power to, to actually get it in um, but I would do maybe um, like try starting with three pokes per dip okay. if you feel like you can um, get by with a little bit more you know you don't want to be um, poking yourself more than you have to, you know, obviously. Um, another thing you can do with, um, with a circle, which I've done with um, Nicole's, is rather than trying to get the actual, like the full extent of the line, just going dot by dot, mm -hmm. doing kind of like pieces, pieces all around. Time. And so it's kind of like a connect the dots, you know? Nice. Um, mm -hmm. So you have a bit of a, an outline that you're following. Yeah, and then you kind of wipe it all away and see where you need to fill in later. Cool. Mm -hmm. all right. And yeah, how's it feeling? Does it hurt? <laughs> it's a luckily it's like a decent like more fleshy space. Uh -huh. um, right. Where are there better areas than others that are hurt less, and what usually causes you know? Oh my what, goodness! <laughs> I mean, you know, fingers hurt so yeah. bad. My, fingers. My finger tattoos all hurt really bad. Yeah, I am. Um, and they and they wear off quicker. I did one on my on my toe. That was um, I have quite a few tattoos, and that tattoo was really brutal. I think just because it's right on the bone, you know, there's yeah. not mm -hmm. a lot of um, anywhere like like you said. That's a bit fleshier. Is um, you know, it's just kind of a matter of where they're where there's a collection of nerve endings. You know, fingers have a lot of nerve endings. Um, this one I did on my wrist was pretty painful just uh, because it's also, mm. there's a lot of nerves that travel right there. Um, another tip that helps with um, not just how pain and comfort level, but also um, how your body is going to react to the tattoo in general is, um, I mean, in general, like you want to be in, in good health. Like if you're, mm -hmm. you're sick okay. and your body's already kind of working in overdrive to try to Fight, fight something like it's gonna have a harder time, and um, you know you're you're injuring yourself, and your body is gonna have to work to, to heal Definitely. it. Definitely. Um, and also being nourished, you want to be fed. You want to get a tattoo when you're really hungry or dehydrated or underslept or, or under any uh, alcohol. You don't really want to yeah. be drinking right. and get a tattoo. Exactly. That also like thins your blood and is um, you know not. A great Probably idea for, for <laughs> right. you end up with a really not okay tattoo, um, and um, you know, and that's as far as safety okay. goes. You want to make sure that you're in a good state of mind, um, and also being warm, making sure that you're like physically comfortable. Or, um, um, pores, pores, yeah. Oh, cool. um, so your body will absorb the ink a little bit better. And, you know, you want to, it's not like, I mean, and it also, like, there, it is painful, you know, and so as much as you can make it as um, comfortable and comfortable. enjoyable as possible. Yeah. yeah. You are yeah. injuring yourself. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your body's like, what the F? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's going to have to heal afterwards. I mean, the, there's a big difference between stick and poke tattoos as far as healing time goes and getting a tattoo in a, in a shop where um, it's, it's generally you're going a little bit, um, I mean ideally the way it should be, like you're not going super deep, you're covering less of a surface area, you heal pretty quickly from it, um, but you still want to take a lot of the same precautions as if you're getting a tattoo in a shop, Definitely. which is like you don't get in a hot tub right mm -hmm. afterwards. Yeah. Um, you keep, it covered, keep it covered, wash it every day, and we'll talk about that too, mm -hmm. I guess, when we put on the band-aid and stuff. And then um, when you were in here earlier, we were chatting, you were talking about kind of, you know, your background in the safety of needles and kind of fighting the stigma of um, at-home tattoos and just tattooing in general. Mm -hmm. You want to speak to that a little bit too? Yeah, I think uh, the origins are really interesting that, you know, um, all cultures on all continents had a tattooing tradition for various reasons, rites of passage, 
pregnancy, um, yeah. I don't know, help me out. Uh, everything, a human experience, right. you know. A mo milestones. Milestones of human yeah. experience. And body so modification, you know, it's been historically a big part of human existence. Um, I mean, I think that there's a lot of stigma that comes from um, a lot at-home tattooing is associated with, with prisons and people giving themselves and each other tattoos in prisons. Or and middle schools. Or in, <laughs> in middle school. Which we don't recommend. <laughs> yeah, no. Right. no, it must be 18. And, and I think that the circumstances in, in which um, people are tattooing in prisons are, are really quite different um, in that like having the materials is all considered contraband. People aren't able to um, access the, the supplies that they need easily and so stuff is smuggled in or stuff is um, made out of whatever people can find, you know, ballpoint pens um, and, you know, whatever pens it is, like lead. pieces of glass, yeah. like people use all kinds of things and, mm -hmm. um, and they, they, they do what they, what they can with what they have, you know, which often leads to it not being um, safe and being shared amongst a lot of people. Um, the rates of hepatitis C transmission in prisons are really huge. It's like upwards of 80 to 90 percent of, um, of inmates have um, can either have hep C going in or contract it while they're um, while they're incarcerated for not just because of tattooing but for all the other ways in which it, um, the virus can be spread. And so I think it's, it is considered to be really dangerous and high risk, but that's very much determined by the environment and the circumstances and the lack of access that people have to supplies that they need to do what they're going to do safely. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> So, way to sum it up. Yeah, yeah, and that's very mm -hmm. much like along the lines of principles of harm reduction is basically people are going to do what they're going to do and um, people might not always agree with those behaviors but it's, you know, it's can't really control what right. people So you might as well give them the tools to do it the most safe way possible. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, in the same way that I was mentioning earlier that um, you know, can consider sunscreen as a tool of harm mm -hmm. reduction. Being in the sun is inherently risky. Like being in a car is inherently risky. Right. So we give people seat belts and air and airbags and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so, um, you know, this is different, of course, but very much along the same lines. And um, and giving tattoos in this kind of way is, um, mm -hmm. you know, a very safe way to do it. Yeah. It's not foolproof, it awesome. but it's safer. Yeah, it's kind of safer. safer. Yeah. Safer. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, you never say that it's it's safe because you know. Right. It's, there's you always know, risk. There's with always the risk. risk. Yeah. But this is um, in this case, the risk is very much minimized. Yeah. Right. I'll go around one more time, and then we could get yeah. it up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I, I wanted to go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that the great thing about um, having this, this kit for, available to you, too, is that um, you, know, you can do one round of it, give it a couple weeks, see how it is, if you want to add to it and do some... Buy another um, kit. Yeah, <laughs> add some more colors, if you want to um, touch it up a little bit. You never want to reuse the ink that you um, had taken out of the bottle to put into the, yeah, the vial yes. because it could be contaminated, but um, mm -hmm. you can always go back to it without having to go to a tattoo shop and paying more money and um, gives you some more agency and autonomy to yeah. you know, have control over your body. Yeah. And I just wanted to add that this is a highly criticized product by the tattoo industry. And I think that will change as people learn more about it and that there is a kind of an underground but less underground practice of home tattooing. Um, as celebrities are doing it and showing like Lena Dunham and Miley Cyrus. But um, something just to realize is that if you're doing this here, for example, or at home, the amount of blood, blood period, or um, stuff from your skin that could carry a bloodborne pathogen is just, it's just you, you know? So there's not a lot of risk of you contracting something mm -hmm. versus you go into a tattoo shop and there's been hundreds of people through there mm -hmm. 
their blood, if it wasn't cleaned properly, is all over the place. And so just to keep in mind that the risk mm -hmm is actually lower <laughs> home tattoo and for I that really, reason yeah i i mean i <clears throat> i really like i really stand behind this product and believe in like it's a great thing and that nicole really emphasizes the safety of it and not only by giving people really high quality supplies materials um and you know really top of the line everything that somebody needs and also the booklet that gives people a guideline encouraging people to read that before they do their tattoo kit and the practice skin stuff yes. which yeah. i've never tried new, kit, before, new kits but, coming out um, soon cool. but yeah making sure people have um the ability to to really take all the all this go through all the motions and all the precautions to like have fun and um and do it do it safely yeah. safely or, Safely or. So you're gonna leave it for now? Yeah. Cause I would say another go. Mm, it will probably lighten up, like in your experience, right, with that color. Would it kind of fall out a little? I mean, it, I think it looks really Unless good. Unless you want to keep it light. I mean, hey, it's your tattoo, it's your body. Yeah. So we can move yeah. on. No, okay. you can. I could do one more. I mean, it's pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So like. Yeah. Um, it also, the more you kind of continue poking in the same area, you your body gets a little bit more um, sensitive, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, like you want to, yeah. there's, you're like, done, you're there's done. no no need yeah. to like, yeah. you know, be Force it. all yeah. too hardcore about it. You know, we yeah. know you're tough. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you can I, I think it looks, it looks yeah. great. You can always yeah. go yeah. back. Yeah. And if you wanted to add some of like the darker pink, like do a little accent on it later. Where can yeah. people get one? Stickandpoketattookit.com. Except no imitation. Because yeah. now there are some people coming out who are not into harm reduction. They're just into making money. So, you know, I'm also into making money, but I'm also into harm reduction and um, donate a lot of the profits to various groups. Mm. And just like Oops. trying to keep it real. I think it's a really cool way to access like, you know, something that's trendy and that people are really into and talking about and, um, and are, there's interest being sparked around it and educating people around harm reduction, which is a like, um, you know, important thing that's important movement in, in yeah. the world and in the country that, um, you know, more people should know about. Totally. This right here is a witch hazel wipe. So witch hazel calms the skin. And, uh, you know, I've heard different things about it, but I like it, so I have it in the kit. And so that's a good thing to do in between your poking, if you're supposed okay. to be doing a bigger tattoo, and or at the end. Yeah, just clean it up with the witch hazel. Mm -hmm. And then... Yeah. Um, Nicole's can, always, like, constantly improving upon the, the kit, yeah, too. Yeah, like, I am going to be adding... really cool to see how it's evolved over time. I'm going to be adding some green soap, but this company calls it red soap. And so you um, will be able to use the, the commonly used soap during tattooing. For now, we have this stuff, and it works fine as well. Mm -hmm. and so to finish up, just do, yeah, alcohol. the alcohol in the whole region. Okay. And, then, and I've learned that it's about moving the uh, germs and mm -hmm. things away. Are you supposed to use a different part of it each time? or? Uh, yeah, I mean, ideally you would want to use a few different alcohol pads. You can, um, they come in the, like the little box. You can, mm -hmm. you can rip open a few at a time cool. even um, and open it up like that. Um, yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and then all of this stuff that, um, including the wipes, the needle, all of that you want to dispose of safely yes. as well. So we'll talk um, about that. We'll have this cool. here. Yeah. Okay. And it's good to just note that what here is covered in your blood. So we've got only the things on this. All right. Okay, but if those things, we kind of keep it here yeah. in the future, you know, we'll okay. wipe down this table. But, um, and then the box is actually useful for getting rid of this stuff. So you use the box for that. Okay. So when, so first put the hustle butter on. So you don't take the gloves off until all the stuff with your blood is put away, so. Put that on, yep. And then you'll keep that and you'll need to put that on um, whenever it dries, okay. basically, for a few days. Hold on, a week to that. Or so. mm -hmm. And then you can open your um, band aid. Open band aid. Yeah. 
And all of this, the needle and all of the, anything that was touching, touching your skin and has the potential to have um, been contaminated with blood can be disposed of at the local needle exchange or any Walgreens, any pharmacy will, um, will also accept that step as long as it's in a um, certified biohazard container. And to go to a needle exchange, it doesn't have to be in a certified biohazard container, but it is a good idea to, to have a, a container that is medical grade and can yeah. be disposed of properly. Cool. In the instructions, I recommend um, if you don't have one of those, you can just use a plastic twist bottle. So yeah. like mm -hmm. a Coke bottle, you've got your needle and you put it in there until you get to the facility. It won't poke through, you know, it's cool. kind of sh mm -hmm. shake it in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you put all this stuff in the box and you wrap it all together, yeah, exactly. And then you can, there you go, the inside out trick with the gloves. Yeah. And it's all contained. It's all mm -hmm. contained in there and you put it in the box. And then you can write biohazard on there. So if anyone's fishing for your trash, <laughs> you can let them know. And great. And then we would, the last thing we do is wipe down this table before we like use it. Do anything else with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's <clears throat> pretty much it. Yeah. And then you were saying um, also there's a lot of specials. Oh yeah. Tomorrow is uh, Friday the 13th, which is um, traditionally a tattoo discount day. So check our <laughs> website <laughs> and Instagram and Facebook for deals tomorrow for purchasing. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, good It was good really job. fun to learn, and it was fun to give myself another stick and poke um, and really get... Yeah, I've definitely been someone who has uh, purchased myself the stick and poke kit, but to get a personal, you know, walkthrough and introduction to it and learn about the um, safety behind it was really yeah. awesome. Cool. Yeah, thank great. you. That was looks like yeah. really professional. <laughs> thanks, you guys. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye-bye.